and it says it's oh and then finish or is it live? Hi! It's... <laughs> good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jill Zandy. I'm the Associate Director and Competition Coordinator for the Mate Center. And I'm here with Matt Gardner, Hi, Competition Technical Manager. And today we are going to walk you through, Matt is going to walk you through the 2018 Navigator Class Competition Props. So these are the things, if you're competing in the Navigator Class, these are the things that you are going to see during your product demonstration. And what's most exciting, not only are you going to get a preview of everything we have here, but Matt is going to answer your questions live right here, right here, right now. So before we get started, I just want to point out a couple of things. Last week we did a scout class prop demonstration. Good news, I posted the links to those demonstrations. We recorded it. It's on YouTube and Vimeo. So if you go to the scout class competition page on our website, you'll see links to it. So that's good news. Another piece of good news is that I just posted the Explorer class, Explorer class fly-throughs. So these are the mission fly-throughs. It looks animated. Um, you'll be working through the Explorer class missions. You'll see the points, again, Explorer class. We'll get the rest of them posted as soon as I get them, but those are exciting, exciting things. So today's navigator. I mentioned before that we'll be doing Ranger. Ranger is going to be scheduled for next week, January 31st, I believe, yes. but we'll get a notice out about that. But to make sure that you don't miss any of the Facebook Lives that we do, you can hit subscribe. You should see the word subscribe in a little box on your screen, and if you do that, it's going to notify you when we go live, so you won't miss a beat. All right, with that, I'll turn it over to Matt. Excellent. Hi, everyone. So uh, we're going to run through the missions today, the product demonstrations. And um, if you have questions, as Jill said, uh, write them in on Facebook. She will see them, ask them, and I will do my best to answer them. Now, today we're going to actually go through the tasks in order. But at the end, I'm going to talk more about the general order you can do things in, including some hints. So uh, stay tuned, and I'll also mention some about order as we go through the missions. Okay, so we are going to start with task one, aircrafts. And the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to use flight data to determine these search zones. So we'll come right on over here, and on your table when you come up, you are gonna get some data, something like this. So this is the data you'll be getting. Your takeoff is the Naval Air Station Sandpoint, your heading, your airspeed, your wind direction, your wind speed, and the aircraft crashed after two minutes and five seconds, for this example at least. And then you're gonna do some math. So I actually, I'm not gonna sit here and do it, um, but I will have it worked out. So essentially the first calculation I wanna do is two minutes and five seconds. That is 125 seconds. And so we're gonna take 125 seconds multiplied by the airspeed, which is 113 meters per second, and that comes out to 14,125 meters, which we're just going to shorten to 14.1 kilometers, okay? Now, we also have this map, and from this map, you can see we have a little key down here, and I know that essentially the one kilometer here, 1,000 meters, one kilometer, is about 0.7 centimeters, and so I'm going to do some more math. So one kilometer on this map equals 0.7 centimeters, so 14.1 kilometers times 0.7. That means for our first vector, how the aircraft flied, uh, it's going to be 9.9 .9 centimeters on this map, and the heading is 160. So I'm going to use a protractor, a ruler, I have some spare paper if I need it, and a pencil. Now you may want to ask your uh, regional coordinator what you're going to have, because they may provide these. But also suggest bring your own, that way you're used to it, you know it, and um, you, it won't be lost before you get there. So you might want to bring your own. Anyway, so we are going 9.9 .9 centimeters at direction 160. So I know that 180 is due south, so our takeoff point is here at Sand Point. So 160 is going to be 20 degrees less than that. So that will be there can draw a line and then we're going to go 9.9 .9 centimeters right there so 9.9 .9 right in this area right about here okay and then we have to do wind as well so the same time the wind affects the flight for the same time the wind is 10 meters per second 
And that's again times 125 seconds, 1.25 meters, 1.25 kilometers. Again, we multiply that by the key. So it's about eight and a half, sorry, uh, eight millimeters, 0.84, eight and a half millimeters, 8.4 centimeters. So, and that's at direction 245. So let's see, 270 is due west, so 25 less than that. So I'm gonna go from here. That would be due west there. So right about this direction, down towards this direction, but we're only moving less than a centimeter. So my first vector, the flight vector, was down to here. And my wind vector was right about here. And so I know that's gonna put me the crash right about here, and that is zone five. So what I'm gonna tell the judge is the airplane crashed in zone five, and then I'm just gonna show him the vector. So it's like the, the flight vector was 9.9 .9 centimeters on here. The wind vector was a little less than that, okay? And if that's right, you will get your, your points. Okay, so the next thing is you are going to identify the aircraft from the tail structure. So let me adjust this a little bit. So here's the aircraft, and here is the tail. You can look at the tail structure there, and it has, you can come around and you can see if you moved around, that it has a number on it, CH82. Now, you will have, on the desk, you're gonna have a navigator, aircraft identification handbook. But just from my knowledge of this, I know that this one has a curve on it. So that makes it one of three aircrafts. It could be a PBY, it could be a B-17, or it could be maybe the Boeing Clipper. And I, know, I just know from this that those are the ones with curves. But I also notice it has a curve here, but a straightish line here and a straight one here. So I think this is a B-17. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm going to look, and yeah, so B-17, that tail structure looks something like this. It's got a curve on the top, but a straight line there and a straight line there. And then I'm going to check. We've got CH-82. Look through here. Yeah, CH-82 is B-17 number two. So again, you would report to the judge that your unknown aircraft is B-17 number two, and you'd get your points. Okay. So the next thing is you're going to place a marker buoy at the website. And Navigator Teams, you're going to be making your own Navigator buoys. Now, the parameters are it has to have a weight. I'm just using some PVC as my weight. It needs to have a float, which is on the surface, and then it needs to have a rope line or something in between. So I did this really simple. Float up here, a rope in between, and a weight. And you're going to have to carry this down and set it somewhere near the aircraft. Now, if you set it way out here, the judge may say, hey, that's not close enough. But generally, you can set it anywhere 30, 50 centimeters, and this should be this should be on the surface, and this should be here. So one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check with your regional coordinator and determine how deep your pool is. So I know in Monterey, our pool, uh, navigator team is going to be operating in 7 feet. So this should be about 7 feet. So uh, this would be on the surface if this was on the bottom. Okay? So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to be removing debris from the aircraft. And there are two parts of this. Once you lift the debris, so this is what the debris is, it's going to be over the aircraft, and you get points for lifting it. And lifting it means it is under control of the ROV, up off the bottom, not touching the airplane. So that will be lifting up. But of course, if you're doing this, that's not lifting. It needs to be up under control of the ROV. And then once you set it, somewhere away from the aircraft. That is the second part, it's removing it from the aircraft. And again, it doesn't have to be really far, you don't have to get it five meters out, just anywhere so it's not in the area of the aircraft. Okay, and the next part is you're gonna be returning the aircraft to the surface, the aircraft engine to the surface, and you're going to be doing that by attaching a lift bag, inflating the lift bag, and then returning this to the side of the pool. So you're gonna have something like this, um, on the surface side of the pool. It has a three in inch in cap. It's gonna have some PVC or ABS pipe. Now this is ABS, and this ABS floats a little bit, so this is positively buoyant, but if you can't get ABS in your area, it might be PVC, which isn't heavy, but you want this positively buoyant. So if you are using PVC, just put a little bit of flotation at the top so this is positively buoyant. So you're gonna carry this down, and you're gonna to have to hook it up to the airplane engine. So here, is the airplane engine, has a number 310 U-bolt, some PVC, and it's gonna have a dive weight attached to it. Now this one has a soft dive weight attached, 
Yours might be a hard dive weight, might be a soft dive weight, but it's gonna have a two pound dive weight. You're gonna have to come down. This has a little hook, number six hook on the bottom. You're gonna hook it in there and this will stay up. Since this is positively buoyant, once you release it, it's gonna be doing, it's gonna hold above this. Now, and we'll get that back in there in a minute. Then what one of your teammates is gonna do is you have uh, airline tubing and a bicycle pump. Now, you are required to use the mate supplied bicycle pump so you end the hose. So you can't get your own bicycle pump, your own airline tubing, you have to use the one here. And this, the end of this is going to have a little bit of just half inch PVC on it. And you can attach this to your ROV. You can take this down. And it's gonna be hard to do single handed, but this is gonna be sitting like this attach the gear, you are going to get this underneath here, and once it's underneath there, one of your team members is going to start pumping. And that's going to push air down the tube. It is going to fill this completely with air, and once you get enough air in here, there's enough volume in here that's going to overcome the two pound weight you bolt in the PVC. This is going to come popping up to the surface. Okay. So once it's on the surface, you can use your ROV to push it back to the surface side of the pool, and you are going to be retrieving this engine. So you're gonna to wanna to get the engine and the airbag on the pool deck. Okay? And that's it for the aircraft task. And you have done a marvelous job. Excellent. Well, there are no questions. No, no questions. questions. Hopefully there are people watching. There are. No, yeah. no, 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 no. But I, I think my mom and dad are watching, so hi, mom and dad. <laughs> I forgot one thing I'm okay. just so excited about today, right? So you may have guessed, we are not in the CMATE workshop anymore. We're actually in a lecture forum room here at the campus of Monterey Peninsula College so we can spread out, Matt can spread out. And I want to give a shout out to our cameraman, Dylan. <laughs> hi, Dylan. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Dylan just found out 10 minutes before we started that he would be the cameraman today because no one is at class or otherwise occupied. So, Newman, we miss you. Dylan is fantastic, fabulous. Thank you, Dylan, for stepping in. Thank you. Okay, let me... That's it. Go on. Yeah. Yep, I'm going to move on to other points. I'm just going to get this. It's like a Monday, a slow Monday. Yeah. I'm going to get this out of the way so when you hold the camera, it doesn't trip. <laughs> of course. We're going to move on to safety, safety, safety. So we're going to move on to earthquakes. And so the earthquake kind of has two parts to it. The first part is deploying the OBS in the designated area. The second part is putting a connector into the power and communications hub. And you can choose to do either of these first. I'm going to do them in order. Um, so the first thing for the OBS part, deploying the OBS in the designated area, these four steps have to be done in order. So the first thing is you have to pull the pin. So this OBS is held on here by the PVC pin. You just have to pull it out, and that's good enough. You can leave it on the bottom. If you bring it back to the surface, that's okay. Just don't walk away with it when you're done with your mission because uh, the next team will need it. And then you are going to pick this up. So you get points for picking this up. And then you are going to deploy this in the designated area. So you're going to carry it over and put it in the designated area. Now, I highlighted it by here, but it also has, let me put it back in here, it also has some rope attached and a little bit of flotation. So underwater, this should be floating up. And you can, if you want, grab it by this, lift it up, and bring it over and set it in here. Okay, so set it in the designated area. And then once it's in the designated area, you're gonna to have to turn the handle on top once around 360 degrees clockwise. So it has one of the handles is painted red, that's gonna make it easier for your pilot and the judge to see that you've done this. So you don't have to use the red one, you can use any of them, but we're gonna go once around. And there you go, once around is enough. It actually goes about three, a little more than three times around, but one, one time around is enough. Okay, so the next part is you're going to take the connector and plug it into the power and communications hub. So before you do that, you do have to open the door, of course, before you can deploy it. So there is a handle you could use to open it, or you could just lift it here, push it over and get it open. So however you get that door open is good enough. And then you're going to drop that in there, okay? Now, also for Navigator, you have the line between here, and you have two waypoints, and you have to get this wire between the two waypoints. So you could just grab the wire, 
or we have this nice handy uh, U-bolt connector and then you want through one, through the other, and that would work because the wire is inside this one and inside this one. Now, as I said, you don't have to use this. Let's say you deploy the OBS, this is in here, and you decide, I don't want to use that, I'm just going to drag this, and you drag this through here, through here, and just drop it in there, and you'll be fine. Okay, so the keys are between both waypoints, dropping this in here, getting the door open. Okay, any questions on the earthquake mission? No, no, it's like really quiet okay. out there. Mondays are quiet days. Must be. A slow and quiet day, but you know, maybe, hey, they read the manual yep. and everything's yep. just there and they got it. They got it. I, I even asked if people wanted to know the secret sauce recipe for winning and no one's down. Okay. So, hey. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so task three is the energy portion of it. Um, and this one has a couple um, equipment that you have to deploy, and then some eelgrass restoration involved as well. But before you deploy the equipment, the first part is using tidal data and nautical charts to determine the optimum location for the tidal turbine. So at your station, you are going to get a piece of paper like this, and it's going to have four tides on it. So this is... 3.33 a.m., 8.47 a.m., 3.46 p.m., 10.36. Your times may differ, but it's going to have four tides throughout one day. And you'll notice on each of these photos, pictures, it's going to have six points where the tide um, flow is being measured. And what you need to determine is which of these six points throughout the day has the highest tide flow. So you could maybe do it by just looking at it. But to do it mathematically, you'd add it up. So for the top left one, if you add up 1.1, 1.7, 3.3, and 2.0, I did the math beforehand, that comes out to 8.1. If we look at the top center, and I add top center on all four, that comes out to 9.1. Top right, if I add all four of those together, comes out to 6.6. .6. Bottom left comes out to 7.4. The bottom middle, if I add up all these bottom middles, it actually comes out to 10.0, and that's actually the high one. So the, the bottom right here is 8.3. So the bottom middle, as I added up all these numbers, the four at the bottom middle have the highest com com combined tide flow, so that is our optimum location. You're gonna report that to the judge. You say, we added them up, and the four bottom middle ones come out to the highest tide flow, and the judge will say, you are correct, and give you your points, okay? If you can't figure this out for some reason, um, you can skip it, but you can't come back and get those points at a later time. Okay, so the next part is installing the turbine and the base onto the bottom, and I just want to say, um, in the prop building instructions, if you downloaded them before last Friday, there was a mistake in them. We just corrected that. It was just something got a little confused. So uh, this is the base. So this will be on the surface. you got to take it down. Now, you can carry it any way you want. We have this nice little handy rope carrier on here, but this is a proper design. So essentially two-inch pipe, two-inch coupling, and some uh, half-inch base. So you're going to carry this down, and you'll notice the bottom of this is red in color. And you're going to put it in the red square. So hopefully everything will be color coordinated. Red goes into red. And the next thing we're going to do is yellow. And that's going in yellow. But anyway, you have to carry this down. And set it in the designated area. Now, it has to be completely in the designated area. So that wouldn't be right because part of it's over. That wouldn't be good. It has to be all the way. It can be in there like that. It can be touching. But it has to be all the way in the designated area. Okay, then you need to deploy the tidal turbine. So your tidal turbine, it's on the surface, has some nice propellers on it. You're going to pick this up. Again, it has a U-bolt as a grab point, but you don't have to use that if you wanted to grab it here somehow. But uh, carry this down, and you are going to set this in the George pipe. And this rope, it has a little float, but it should be easy just to push out of the way as needed. And drop that down in there, and that's deploying the turbine. I wish that was a really functioning turbine so we could yeah. generate a little bit more lighting in here. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. It turns in the wind. They do turn in the wind. Sat outside of my house when we're turning. 
Okay, so the next part is. Oh, and there was a question. Oh, good, Pat, good, good. Patrick Hey, uh, Patrick. He was wondering if the tasks need to be done in order. So I'm going to cover that um, at the end because, as I said, there's some, some certain things. But generally, as I was mentioning, certain tasks have to be done in order. Like when you're deploying the OBS, you got to pull the pin, but that's locker. You got to pull the pin or else it won't move. And then you have to lift it before you can move it, and then you have to move it before you can deploy it in the area. Um, okay, but sorry, for this task, any of the equipment, you can do it in any order. So the next step is installing an intelligent, adaptable monitoring package to monitor the area. And I said this during Scout, but if you look um, in the resources area, there's a video on this. These are just cool instruments. They have cameras and other instruments. And if you have a big turbine turning underwater, these can actually monitor the area. And if something's in there, maybe like a big mammal, a whale, a seal, it can actually shut it down. Or even up in the Pacific Northwest, a bunch of salmon swim by, it can shut the turbine down to make sure nothing's damaged. So it's just really cool. And if you get a chance, you can look at that video. But anyway, this is gonna be on the surface. Again, it has a nice rope and float as a lift point, but you could lift it from anywhere you want. And you're gonna to have to take it down. And again, this is kind of yellowish in color, and you're gonna deploy it in the yellow square. And again, it needs to be all the way in here. So that would work, but that would not be good. That would not be good. It needs to be, legs need to be all the way back. That way, that way, however you want. In there like that, okay? And then you're going to have to latch this in place, and it's simply this black handle here. You're gonna push this way, and this is a latch here, so this just needs to be down like that, so latch. It doesn't actually have to be over or touching the IEP. So if it does, that's great. If you have it like this, and you latch it up like that, great. But if the IMP's out here, that still counts. As long as this is down, it is latched in place. And that's a locking mechanism. And essentially, it's, it'll be like this. All you have to do is push, pull, manipulate this, so it does that. Okay. So the next thing is... We're so good. Okay. Oh, wait, question. Hey, Russ, how are you? Russ asks, can the IAMP be laid on its side within the square? Did I get the glass of water? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Actually, no, sorry. Uh, I should have mentioned that earlier, but everything needs, to be, everything needs to be upright. So, obviously, well, this wouldn't fit in there. So, you know, it would be over. But this does need to be upright, so you can install that, as does this. So, even though this would fit in there, that would not count. It does need to be upright. Like that. And it has these nice legs or feet on the bottom to make that a little bit easier. Okay, hopefully that answered your question. Oh, we got another one. Okay, Morgan. Hi, Morgan. I should have pointed out. Hi, Morgan. Thank you for asking. She says, not for the IAMP, but for the tidal turbine. Yes. The latching mechanism for the tidal turbine. Page 11 of the Navigator Build Guide. So that was, actually, that was where we had an issue. So in the manual, there's, there's no latching of the um, tidal turbine. So we do for Ranger, but uh, unfortunately my problem, I actually brought some Ranger stuff into Navigator mistakenly, but there is no latch. So the, the two things you get points for are deploying the base in the designated area and putting the turbine in there. Okay, we're gonna give a thumbs up if you got that. Yeah. Because I know we had a little, yeah, wiggle, and, wi wi little wiggle with the Wi-Fi in here, so we're gonna give a thumbs up if you okay. got that. Okay, if not, I'll, I'll answer it again. We'll do it again. Okay. So the next part is placing a mooring a given distance from the base um, where we put the tidal turbine. So you'll notice over on the tidal turbine we have this little vertical stand here. This is our zero mark and the judge is going to give you a distance. So for instance, for this example the judge is going to say we want to place a mooring 1.50 meters from the zero and this will be available on your station when we get there. So, you want to measure out 1.5 meters. So, you can do this any way you want. I'm doing it with a simple tape measure. I've got a little attachment point here. And actually what I know about this attachment point is this is about 10 centimeters. So actually, this will add 10 centimeters. So instead of going out to 1.5 meters, I'm actually gonna go out to 1.4, and this will be max for 10. So we're gonna come on over here. I'm going to use this to attach to there, pull on out, 
one meter, 110, 120, 130. Okay, so on here, 140, but I know that I have 10 extra centimeters because of that. So 150 is right here. So this is the mark. And I would tell the judge, show the judge is that, hey, 150 is right about here. And of course I'd explain to the judge, even though my tape measure says 140 centimeters, that has an extra 10, so this is 150. And hopefully the judge will tell you, you are correct. And then you need to deploy the mooring. So the mooring will be on the other side of the pool and it's constructed of a base section, a float section, and then in the middle you have this um, U-bolt. And again, this should be designed for about the, the depth of your pool. So as I said, our depth in Monterey is um, about seven feet. This is actually set up to be a little more than seven feet, um, but this should be about seven feet. So you are going to take this, bring it down, and you are going to set it right next to that mark that you measured out 1.5 meters. So we're gonna set it right there. Anywhere in here is good. The 1.5 meter was the red blue mark. So anywhere in here is fine. You can even straddle it if you wanted. And so as you do this, this will be on the bottom, this will be up on the surface, and this should be held part, part way up in the water column. Set that here since we're not underwater. It's a little bit harder to explain, but that'll be part way up. Okay? So the next part is once you've placed the mooring on the bottom, you are going to attach an acoustic Doppler velocimeter, an ADV, onto it. And again, you are responsible for building your own ADV. The parameters are, it needs to be at least 20 centimeters long, and it needs to be attached to this U-bolt, which is going to be part way up, okay? So, it's up to you to decide how to attach it. I've come up with an ingenious and super, super difficult way to attach it. So, what I'm going to do, my RV, me, I have some really good mini players, so I'm actually going to tie a knot in this rope around that. Now I'm going to say, I would not advise doing this method. Come up with a different method to do this. But I'm, you're going to bring this over. As I said, this will be held part way up in the water column. And you are going to attach it onto here. And as I said, I'm going to tie a knot. And since as a Boy Scout, I'm going to make it a square knot. Okay, now... You'll notice as this is, again, this is on the surface, that's on the bottom, my ADV is attached to that. Now again, you come up with your own attachment method um, to get it attached to that number 310 U-bolt. Okay, so the last part of the mission is to do some eelgrass restoration work. So there's going to be two eelgrass samples down on the bottom. The eelgrass samples are just some simple PVC and I just used some scissors to cut some foam sheeting. I got the foam, foam sheeting at Michael's. And since it is foam, it'll sit up. So, of course, we're not underwater here, but it should sit up like this and wave and look nice. So anyway, there's two samples down on the bottom. You have to pick those up, bring them back to the, the top, and bring them back to the pool deck. Okay, now on the pool deck, there are gonna be two eelgrass frames. And these eelgrass frames or what scientists were prepared to put back down there in case there was any damage to the eelgrass while you're working. So these up here, and these are actually built a little different. They're pretty much the same, but they have a little bit of mesh. And this is one inch square plastic mesh. And it's actually four squares by four squares. So there are going to be two of these on the surface. You are going to carry them down. And of course, since everything's color coded, you're going to put them in the green square. So that one there, that one there, again, they have to be all the way in the square. So that wouldn't count. That wouldn't count. That wouldn't count. They need to be all the way in that square. Now, something I want to talk about is, do you have to do these one at a time? Do you have to do them both at once? Nope, you can do it any way you want. So let's say you had a really good vehicle and you wanted to carry down a bunch of stuff at once. That's great. So let's say these two, the samples were down here. These are up here, and you want to go, hey, I'm going to carry these down, put both of these in here, pick these up, bring them back, that's fine. If you want to do this while you're carrying some other equipment, 
That's fine. If your ROV can take down lots of stuff at once, bring back lots of stuff at once, that's perfectly fine. Okay? So I think that's it for the missions, unless we have any more questions. No, we don't. We don't. Okay. So as Patrick and some, some others may have asked, the order of tasks. Let me get a drink of water. Yeah. Any more questions? Send yeah, them send them quick because we're... We're going to wrap. However... Yes. They miss talking to you live. They can always post into the FAQ board, which yes. I know you're going to talk about. Yes, I will. I will talk about that. So, order of tasks. Certain of the missions, you have to do something first for each specific task. But generally, you could do this in the order you want it. For example, you could do the eel grass first, then come over and do some airplane stuff, then shift over, put some uh, energy down, then shift over to the OBS. So you can mix and match the missions as you want. Now, there are a couple things that you need to do first. As I said, before you install any of the equipment, before you install the, tur install the turbine, the IAMP, the mooring, you need to figure out the optimum zone, which is this part of it. And of course, um, before you get any of the airplane stuff back up to trade it, you need to solve where it crashed. Now you can skip any of these, but if you skip them, get some of the aircraft done, you can't come back and do this at a later part. Which brings me to my hint. The aircraft is mass that you're doing on the surface, and the optimum region location is math you're doing on the surface. So your pilot doesn't have to be involved in this. So your pilot could be going down and doing stuff, and since this is for task three, this is for task one, maybe your pilot goes down and starts task two, and one of your team members figures out this, and one of your other team members figures out this. So you don't actually need the ROV to do the math for the location of the crash or the optimum region. So let's say, just as an example, you want to start, your pilot goes down and starts the OBS test to it. Starts pulling that pin, moving the OBS. Meanwhile, one of your team members is sitting over here doing all the math and tells the judge, hey, this is the math, you're doing yourselves right. Then, you know, let's say your pilot does a little bit of this, gets the OBS involved, then wants to come over and do the aircraft. So it does a bunch of the aircraft stuff. And then your other team member gets the optimum region done. So the pilot says, hey, let's go over and start installing equipment. And you can mix and match as you want, but as I said, there's a couple things you need to do first for the aircraft, figure out where it crashed, and the optimum location for the energy. Yeah. Hey, that was a great hint. And Patrick Rowe, who has um, done a little ROV yeah, ROV. operation in, in the real world for a living here, Patrick said it looks like a good mid-water flying mission and yeah. the skills are going to be important so as Matt has always preached get the ROV ready functional yeah. and and have your pilot practice practice flying yeah flying, flying. Pra That's practice flying we put out how to build all these so you can build them put them in your pool but even if maybe you haven't got these built yet but your ROV is done just go around fly in the pool you know if your mentor or someone says hey land over on that square in the pool you drive there now I'm over there Driving practice helps, and then once you build these missions, practice, practice, practice. Yeah, and, and Patrick even said, even if it's not your ROV that you're going to use this True. year to have a similar control system or even something, just so you can get a feel, especially if your pilot's going to be new this year, practicing, um, going through that stuff, picking stuff right. up, just going where people are directing you is, is a great, great hint, great piece of advice. Yep, yep. The more in water time you get, the better. So, um... I have a couple other things, but as I said, um, this will, as Jill said, this will, this will be posted as a video. But if you have questions, if you look through this and have a couple other questions, post them to the FAQ board. You can find the uh, link. It's right above size and weight. And since we, uh, I do want to mention some size and weight. So before the mission, you are going to get your vehicle. Sorry, for Navigator, it's just size. You're not doing weight. Call it size and weight because that's the upper divisions are doing weight as well. But for your size... You're going to do that before each mission run. So if you get two chances, you're going to do it before each one, and that's actually tied in. Those points are tied into each mission run. Um, cool. Yeah, I think that's about it. If there aren't any other questions. I don't see any. Okay. I don't see any, but I bet you that this will encourage yep. people to go on and look and ask more questions. And I know there's a lot of people, I, I did get some comments that, you know, the students are in class right now or the yeah. students are home, whatever. 
And so, um, yeah, don't worry, it will be posted, it will be recorded, you'll be able to look at this later. And then again, if you have questions after that, post them to the FAQ board. So I just wanted to say, once again, obviously we're not in the CMATE workshop, but speaking of the workshop, you know, if you plan to order anything for your ROV from, yes. from the CMATE store, um, encouraging you to get those orders in. Dylan, actually, we're gonna let him wrap up here soon so he can go ship some orders <laughs> out. Could be your order, so it's actually good that we're wrapping it up early today. But just make sure you get those in. We don't wanna hold you up, we just wanna make sure you get what you need for the competition. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because that one, way when you do, as soon as we go live, you'll get a notice. Ranger class will be next week, the 31st is Wednesday. I think it's a Wednesday. Wednesday, we, yeah, Wednesday. Um, you'll get a notice about that. So anybody Ranger class, um, tune it in. And I think that's it. Except, I'm gonna have to do it. Go Eagles. Yes, Super Bowl, two weeks. All right, with that, we will see you next time on our Facebook Live. See ya.